This week we return to Whangarei for round two of the Brian Green Property Group New Zealand Rally Championship and the drivers who compete for the two-wheel drive honours. Leading the FIA two-wheel drive cars is former champ Dylan Thompson in the Fiesta ST, then Jackson Clendon, Jordan Grant in the only Suzuki Swift, another Fiesta for Bryn Jones, Jeff Ward, the senior driver in the class, and finally Brendan Wadsworth in a newer R2 Fiesta. Four drivers enter the high horsepower open two-wheel drive category. Marcus Van Klink in the Triple Rotor RX-8, Ari Pettigrew in the BMW 318Ti, former New Zealand champ Bruce Herbert in the Turbo Lancer, and Dave Strong in his radical mid-engine Honda Jazz. Finally, the historic cars, led by Shane Merland, Escort RS 1800, John Silcock in the Group B RX-7, Anthony Jones in another Escort, Paul Fraser in his RS 1800, and finally the Toyota Starlet KP61 of Steve Cox. Two runs at night through Point Islands, Pettigrew leading open two-wheel drive, Jordan Grant fastest of the FIA two cars, Anthony Jones the fastest of the historics. Four stages repeated make up the eight stages on Saturday north of Whangarei, Ari Pettigrew and Marcus Van Klink had slugged it out on the Otago stages until the Mazda crashed out. Special stage three, Helena Bay, Van Klink held the class lead. To double caution, long six right times. Marcus to two certainly right. didn't like Through being beaten down there, and you can see he really to upped right. his game here at Whangarei, ready to take the fight to Pettigrew. Well done, go, go, go. That's perfect. Well done, Rita. 150 flat to finish, 300 to stop. But it was Bruce Herbert, the old campaigner, who blitzed the competition on Helena. It's great to see Bruce back in the championship. He missed the opening round, but you can see his sheer skill level there, just the way he throws the car around. He uses all the road. Pettigrew, third through the stage and third in the class, but just six seconds separating the top three. Hari, how did the Beamer go through that one, the first test this morning? Yeah, it was pretty trying through there. It was so slippery in places, eh? But managed to make it through, so that's the main thing. Hopefully it cleans up a bit for the second pass, but yeah, we'll see. Obviously, uh, first blow to you last night in terms of that two-wheel drive battle. You happy with how you went through the Super Special? Yeah, it's not my favourite stage, but yeah, we got through it okay, so it was good, yeah. Dave Strong, fourth in his Honda Jazz, powered by a V6 mid-mounted engine. Dave's always had some interesting rally cars and this is certainly one of them. It's a bit of a parts bin special from the records, and it seems to uh, have a lot of potential. Stage four saw a turnaround for Pettigrew. He was six seconds faster than Van Klink, putting him to the class lead by just 0.3 seconds. Dylan Thompson was faster through special stage three, Helena Bay, and that put him into the lead of the FIA class two. Jordan Grant, second fastest on the stage. A great performance by Jordan. He's right up there with Dylan, who's the real benchmark of the class. And this car's a little bit different to the ST Fiesta. It's almost more like the R2 spec cars, albeit a home-built version. Bryn Jones, third, just two seconds back. Jeff Ward hanging on to fourth. <laughs> And Brendan Wadsworth moving to fifth as Jackson Clendon slowed in the stage with a broken engine mount, which would force him back to service early. With historic class leader Jeff Judd not travelling north, a chance for the other competitors to make a break. Anthony Jones was third after the opening round, but here on the Northland stages he was on a charge, special stage three and four, and held a 12 second lead. Jonesy, obviously a drama there with the car in front, and you've had to pass him through the stage, how'd you, how'd you manage it, alright? Uh, he was the car in front of Dave, so well, we just caught him here right at the end, so that's been no cause, no problems for us, but it's actually quite grippy in there for the amount of mud that's in there, so it's all good. John Silcock of the Group B Mazda in second. And not far behind, this is shaping up to be a real classic battle amongst the classics. <laughs> Shane Merland in touch in third. That's not going to help his cause. <laughs> Steve Cox is always going to struggle to match the power of the escorts in his little starlet, but he was ahead of the RS1800 of Paul Fraser. 
And this is a cool car that's been driven by some of the biggest names in the sport. And the 780 on the end of the number plate's just a nice little tip of the hat. Marcus Van Klink was nine seconds faster than Pettigrew on stage five, enough to take him to the lead of open two-wheel drive. That put Pettigrew to second, but just 8.7 seconds back. Dave Strong would retire at the end of the stage and head back to service early. A puncture halfway through stage five forced Dylan Thompson and Amy Hudson to stop to change the tyre, dropping them to fourth in the class. This is where a bit of experience comes in. You hear Dylan and Amy creating a plan before they start so that they can minimise the time loss when they're stopped to change the puncture. Okay, we're changing it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. That was a welcome gift to Jordan Grant, who took the lead. Bryn Jones in third, but still right in touch, 38 seconds behind. No change in historics though, with Anthony Jones in control. Special Stage 6 was cancelled after Matt Adams crashed, blocking the road. So at the lunch break, it's the open two-wheel drives of Van Klink and Pettigrew, then the historics of Jones and Silcock, separated by less than 17 seconds. Jordan Grant leading the FIA two-wheel drive cars. The afternoon stages are repeat of the morning, with the roads drying out. Ari Pettigrew took 4.7 seconds out of Van Klink's lead on the second run through Helena to narrow the gap to just 4 seconds. On stage 8 he took more time and took the lead by 3.3 seconds. The two drivers trading stage wins through the afternoon, but Pettigrew holding on to lead day 1 by 8.4 seconds. And that battle's been a highlight across the day, not just for the spectators, but the competitors. They love a fierce battle. Herbert had to be happy with third. He was losing between 20 to 30 seconds per stage, the Lancer lacking the traction of the other cars. And with old technology, the turbocharger comes on like a light switch. It makes it really hard to drive. Dylan Thompson faced a big battle to try and regain the time lost from the puncture. To add to that, the car had a slight misfire, but he set to work, winning every stage in the afternoon to finish second, 37 seconds behind Jordan Grant. Grant has done a lot of work to develop this quick Suzuki and the day one lead was well deserved. Unfortunately Bryn Jones punctured a fuel tank and had to retire after stage 11. That left Jeff Ward in third place. Anthony Jones and John Silcock having a big battle for the historic lead. Jones led after the morning stages, but Silcock made a big push in the afternoon. The gap never more than 3.2 seconds, until stage 10, when Silcock finally took an 11 second lead. In third, Shane Merlin had been second fastest on the first stage of the afternoon, and slipped back over the next three stages. Steve Cox finishing ahead of Paul Fraser, 4th and 5th respectively. And that's a great performance. This is only a 1300 Starlet, so up against the 2 litre Escorts and the 13B Rotary, it's a huge drive. In open two wheel drive, Ari Pettigrew leads a tight battle with Marcus Van Klink, Bruce Herbert in 3rd, the Historics John Silcock again, a close battle just ahead of Anthony Jones, and Jordan Grant leads the FIA two-wheel drive class over a recovering Dylan Thompson. It's day two of Rally Whangarei, so the times today count toward leg two and overall points. Fine but misty conditions for the first two stages. Ari Pettigrew threw down the challenge to Marcus Van Klink on the opening stages, taking the stage win on both 11 and 12. But the challenge from Van Klink ended on stage 12 with a damaged diff forcing him out. Bruce Herbert up to second in class, then ahead of the Honda of Dave Strong. And you can't forget Bruce is a four-time New Zealand rally champion. He's woken up on the right side of the bed today, so those other guys need to look out. The 
strong Honda A project finished during the disrupted 2020 season. Unfortunately, Strong retired with a misfire before service. Pettigrew stretching out the morning lead to 35 seconds over Herbert. Ari's car is less powerful than his rivals, but his commitment is just huge. Ari, obviously in this uh, this dogfight with, with Marcus and overall two-wheel drive, how was that first stage for you today? Yeah, there's some real tricky bits in that one, eh, with the sun and the fog, so pretty trying for the first stage, but yeah, I think we went okay, so it's good time to stack up. Good way to wake you up in the morning? Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> in the FIA Group N class, all the cars were back on the stages for day two. Dylan Thompson immediately setting the pace, showing his experience on these stages. And it's hard for Dylan, with an electrical misfire, he just doesn't know if he's going to have the power coming out of the corner. Five right bump bridge, 100. Six left minus, into six right. 120. Jordan's car is a little bit quicker down the straights and a bit lighter with the sequential and a bit more modern stuff. Um, we're still almost group in spec minus a few things, but they're, they're obviously pretty even. Um, the faster stages, he's a bit closer to us, and the twisty stuff, we've got a bit more of an advantage with the Rigers and the um, years of setup from M Sport. But it was Jackson Clendon who was in second after the first stage. He'd have a close battle with the Suzuki of Jordan Grant over the first three stages. But on stage 13, he broke a drive shaft and had to retire. Um, we tore a CV boot and yeah, the, the, it was vibrating really hard um, on touring so we it, it got progressively worse and worse as well as this, after the next stage so we sort of took caution to win and pulled over and yeah, not to damage um, the car too much. Bryn Jones took third then but he too was in a tight battle, Jeff Ward just 20 seconds back after the morning stages. And Brennan Wadsworth, fifth, another 44 seconds back in the R2 Fiesta. In the historic class, Anthony Jones headed the field in his escort, but he was being kept honest by the Mazda Group B of John Silcock. They were under a second apart on two of the four stages and would end the morning just 22 seconds apart. It's a classic battle, these guys. They've been hammer and tong right the way through the weekend. <laughs> Shane Merlin was fastest on stage 12, but on stage 14, Waipu Caves, Merlin dropped a minute and 48 and would finish the morning in third. Steve Cox in the startup holding fourth place, just 25 seconds back. And there's a heap of experience in this car. Steve's been rallying since the 90s, and Laurie Brentzel in the co driver seat, well, he's been there since before rallying even started. And class veteran Paul Fraser, fifth in the escort. So for the day two results, Ari Pettigrew leading open two-wheel drive, Dylan Thompson leading the FIA Class 2, and Anthony Jones leading the Classics. Ari Pettigrew continued to lead the open class over the afternoon stages. It's great to see a father and son run team. They really do run on a tight budget, and here's hoping we can see them at all the rounds throughout 2021. In fact, in the overall rally results, he was seventh outright of the 19 rally finishes. Bruce Herbert gaining good points in second, and he would finish eighth outright. John Silcock was nursing an ailing clutch through the afternoon, making it hard to challenge Jones for historics. Jones would finish an excellent ninth overall and lead the historic cars, with Silcock just 20 seconds back in the end. In the FIA Class 2, Jordan Grant would win two stages through the afternoon in the Suzuki. But Dylan Thompson had stretched enough of a lead to take the win, despite a leaking steering rack. And this really is a lesson for the young fellas about perseverance. They lost a lot of time with that puncture and have steadily clawed it back. Great drive. Probably shouldn't have stopped in the middle of the straight. Yeah, that's right. Can't do a lot. Bryn Jones finishing third for day two points, but his DNF on day one means Jeff Ward will finish the rally third in class. So in the rally Whanganei standings, Ari Pettigrew, lead two-wheel drive car from Bruce Herbert, then the historics of Jones and Silcock, 
over Dylan Thompson and Jordan Grant. That leaves Ari Pettigrew with 72 points over Dylan Thompson on 46, tied with John Silcock, Anthony Jones just two behind from Shane Merland, Jeff Judd, Jeff Ward and Brent Taylor. The two-wheel drive championship heads south to Timaru in June for round three. We'll see you then.